welcome to Geo Snippets. I'm Head Hard Hat. In the next few minutes, we're going to give you some interesting information and tidbits about the game, the sport, yes, the obsession, known as geocaching. Well, you know, folks, if you've seen Geo Snippets in the past, you know I like experimenting when it comes to making geocaches. Well, this particular one is no different. Matter of fact, it started out as a suggestion from one of our Geo Snippet viewers on how to make a rock out of Bondo. Now, for me, especially growing up through school and high school and whatnot, I always was terrible when it came to making wood projects. It's kind of the old adage, no matter what you made, put two grooves in it and it's an ashtray. <laughs> That's what happened here. I made this. What you are looking at is what I call a very realistic looking anthill, which is actually made out of Bondo. That is a 35 millimeter container that will hold a logbook. How cool is that? Okay, let's quickly go over the items you're going to need to make this particular geocache. First off, you're going to need your standard 35 millimeter container. Now the ones that I like are the white ones with the cap that has a real strong seal to it. Uh, I like these better than the gray ones with that cap that kind of folds over. It just is that much more waterproof, so I highly recommend you try this. Next, you're going to need good old-fashioned carbondo, some newspaper, some kind of bucket or bowl that you can put. I got this at the local hardware store. Some rubber gloves because bondo sticks to everything once it starts hardening. And a stir stick. That's what you need. Let's start putting this together. This is what Bondo is. It's kind of a, a gray, eh, about the consistency of thick pudding. Uh, comes. This is the actual Bondo itself, and this is the hardener. This is what makes it turn to rock. Poor enough that I'm going to be in. The thing you're going to want to do most definitely is get some gloves on. Because Bondo sticks to everything. Okay. When you're ready to get everything together, you're going to have to work quick because Bondo sets literally in about three or four minutes. You've got your 35 millimeter container ready. You've got your newspaper down. You've got your Bondo. This looks like about four ounces in your cup. And you've got your hardener. I'm going to take the hardener, pour in about, for the four ounces, I'd say about a third of the tube. There you go. That's the hardener. Kind of a reddish color. And what you want to do is mix this together until it turns kind of a, oh, almost a brown. Once that's in, it's activated. It's ready to be used. There's the 35 millimeter. Face down is good. You're going to take this and pour it right on top. Literally on top of it. And again, you got to act quick. Cover all of it as much. Literally scrape it out. Get it all on as quickly as possible. Cover the whole thing so that it hit, builds up a base all the way around it to the bottom. Alright, that's all of it. Four ounces seems to be a goodly amount. And what you want to do is literally, it's going to build a base Make sure it covers the 35 millimeter completely and forms, actually goes out a little bit. And as this is going to start drying in the next minute or so, you're going to start pulling some of this up like this and actually pull it up around it. And as this starts to harden, it becomes easier to do. See how quick this is hardening? The idea is to make this look like an anthill 
So get in there and start forming this rough area around it. Look how fast that's drying. Now I'm in the sun, but you want these little crevices formed that fast. Look how hard it's almost not be able to use now. That's how fast this dried. But what you're looking for is to make it look rough. There you go. That's how fast it is to make this that quick to that I can literally take this now pop it off. There's your 35 mm. This is the top of your 35 millimeter container right here. What you want to do while this is still warm and relatively soft, it's not necessarily rock yet, is you're going to want to have an area that people are going to be able to easily pull that cap off. So what you want to do is chisel out all the way around here. There you go. Nice channel all the way around it. That way, lid pops off just like that. Already got the logbook inside. <laughs> Get yourself some gray primer and spray it down. This is about 15 minutes after we poured it. And it's still very warm, but I'll tell you what, that primer paint dries extremely quick when it's like this. Let's give it a quick coat. All the way around. This primer is going to stick to Bondo like glue, makes a really good base, and it also seals it. Also, don't forget, after the top is dry with the primer, also do the bottom. I know what you're thinking. Right now it looks like a gray lump. It's going to look like an anthill because all the magic comes in the next part. What you're going to need is some textured stone spray paint. You, depending on the terrain that's in your area, you're going to have to find a couple of different colors to work. I'm going to use a lighter spray right now. Let me show you what it looks like. You got to spray about a foot and a half away when you do it. You really get that sand look. Now she's looking like an anthill. Give it a real good dose and let that dry. Now that's actually going to take probably a good, oh, I'd say three to five hours to dry correctly. Okay, I've let this dry for about an hour. And what I want to do now is put on the second phase of textured stone paint. This is a dark brown and we're going to use this for a little bit of shadowing just to make this look a little more realistic. I'm going to spray that on at the very base and just a smidge over the actual top of it. Let's see what it looks like. Again, do it from a distance and you want just the bottom. Gives it that little bit of texture and just a smidge to blend with the top. And there you have the finished product. Now I took the cap off so you can see the 35 millimeter and the log book that's inside. But that to me is one slick looking anthill. And it's super easy to make. All you have to do is follow the directions that we have here, have a little patience, do a little experimentation, and you can have a really quality geocache product. I think that is just really cool. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Geo Snippets and come back real soon where we give you even more interesting information and tidbits about the game, the sport, yes, the obsession, known as geocaching. This is Head Hard Hat saying we hope to see you out on the trails real soon. Bye-bye, folks.